So if you haven't been living under a rock, you've probably heard of Devon, the very first AI software engineer. Well, it's officially been released. Before we dive into the video, let's hear from Cognition, the team behind the innovation that's gonna take all of our jobs. Today, we're making Devon generally available. Devon is a fully autonomous software engineer that can take on tasks like bugs, refactors, and small feature requests. So getting Devon's help on an issue is as easy as typing at Devon. Devon is a junior engineer and works best with a great manager. In the right workflows, it's helped our users build more in complex code bases. To show you how we use it, we work with Devon to make contributions to popular open source repositories. We're sharing all those runs below so that you can check them out yourself. You can hire Devon now at app.devon.ai. We're excited to see what you build. Before we dive in, make sure to hit that subscribe button. It really helps us out and ensures you won't miss any of the cool tools and tips we've got coming your way. So, you've heard about the open source repositories it has contributed to. It's a pretty revolutionary tool aimed at companies looking to cut costs. It's integrated with Slack and GitHub. You can tag Devin in Slack to assign tasks, and it keeps you updated on the progress. On GitHub, it can create pull requests and even respond to the ones you've made. Just take a look at this demo in action. Recently, we started using Devon to do QA testing for Devon because things break all the time and Devon helps us find the bugs. Devon is using the web browser to log into the web application. We gave it a Google account with password and 2FA, and then it just starts testing all the features, creating a session, sending messages. It's kind of crazy, actually. Like It's testing itself through its own application and um, talks itself. Kind of funny. Anyways, at the end, it um, gives a structured output. And um, creating these is really easy. It's just a single prompt. And now this runs automatically whenever we push new changes to Devon. So they even did the sweet bench test and gave good results. Although they have compared with older models, their team has mentioned that they have their own proprietary models and the benchmarks that they released based on their own testing reveals it to be superior to the O1 preview model. So Devon responds to natural language and can even plan your projects for you if needed. On top of that, it also offers its own terminal and an editor, along with a browsing feature to test your code. So first, when you go to the website, you'll have to log in. If you don't have an account, you can sign up. So here's what happened. After I logged in, it asked for my name. Then it checked if I was ready to give it access to GitHub and Slack, since that's how its workflow is mainly set up. Next, it asked for my organization name, and then bam, it hit me with the purchase plan which is $500 per month. However, if we look at the pricing, it's based on something called agent compute units. It all works out to about $8 per hour, which is a great deal for a software engineer. Another funny thing is that they've written access to Devon as a core capability of Devon. That's pretty hilarious. But anyways, let's go ahead and look at some more demos. Hey, I'm Walden, one of the developers here at Cognition AI. We were playing around with whether or not Devon could start a side hustle on Upwork. So here's the actual real job from Upwork, where the client wants to set up this computer vision model, which actually looks quite interesting. It seems very difficult to set up. Um, I'm not sure how I would start doing this, but you know, you give the task to Devin and ask Devin to figure it out, and things just kick off. Devin immediately goes ahead, and you can see it sort of starts setting up the repo. It actually runs into some issues here with the versioning. So if you watch how Devin deals with it, Devin's actually updating the code to make these things work. He continues with this, loading and importing packages. You can see that actually downloads images from the internet to run through the model. But you can see here that there are actually some issues that come across. However, Devin knows how to handle these things. Devin kind of pushes through. And if you look closely, Devin's actually doing print line debugging here, where Devin is adding these statements to track where the data flows. And Devin continues to do this until Devin understands how everything's working and actually then updates the code with the fixes after removing print line statements. Devin continues this pattern of fixing code and running it again until it runs the image model across all of these rows across the world. And we can ask for a report from Devin. At which point, Devin sends over some sample images of roads with 
damage marked out. And a nice TXT file explaining Devin's work and the different kinds of outputs of the model. Good job, Devin. You can see me make the request right here on the left. Let's see what Devin did. On the right, we can track Devin's work and watch Devin jump from tool to tool. First, Devin clones the repository using the shell, then reads the readme in an editor to learn how to set up the code, then goes back to the shell to install the required dependencies. Devin also opens up a web browser to take a look at the issue. Now, Devin starts coding. At some point, Devin even opens up some Rust documentation to debug a compiler error. Finally, Devin finishes the task and reports a summary of the changes that were made. Hey, if you're enjoying this video, I just wanted to say, you can now support the channel using the super thanks option below. It's a simple way to help us keep creating and means a lot. Thanks so much. I was also reading other people's take on this new tool and it actually takes custom behavior from you and adds it to its own learnings. Also read that Devin can reliably do the work of a junior developer and it's way better than the old method. You know, hiring a real junior dev. Plus it only costs eight bucks an hour, but it's not all sunshine and rainbows. Also read by many people that Cursor is still better than this whole software dev and that Devin is just a waste of money. Then just after launch, there was a critical security incident. One of its prime members accidentally exposed a VS Code live share URL, allowing anyone to access Devin's machine. It was resolved quickly though. Every time I expose this, what it does is that someone from chat jumps in, jumps onto the machine, and then RMRF no preserve root slash. If you accidentally leak your URL, People have access to your repository. Welcome to Costco. I love you. I kind of feel like, I assume that's what's happening. I kind of feel like there needs to be a bit more permissions. So my guess is that this URL, if it shows up, people get full access to whatever Devin has access for. Bruh. Cool, I have access to every Devin ever now, GG. Although it certainly has annoyed some people. Did you finally get this thing committed? Nice, Devin committed the change. Let's go. Wait, no, wait, hold on. No, Devin committed the change for the WebSocket server implementation and preparing to push them to the remote repository. My gosh, what is, what is that? Well, that wraps it up for today. Thanks for watching. And until next time, keep exploring.